better victory is mine. Amen. That means it belongs to me. And that means that no matter what it's going to take for me to get up and get it, that's what I'm going to do. I told Satan, get thee behind. Now, you can't leave him out in front. And you can't. There's an old song, and I'm not going to sing it right now because I'm out of breath. There's an old song. Uh, don't let him hide. Anybody ever heard that song? Yeah. Don't let him ride. Right. If you let the devil ride, he thinks that he can drive. So don't let him ride. I've made up in my mind that I'm not going to give the enemy any opportunity at all to have any place occupied in my miracle. Don't the last several weeks, God has given several of you in this church the opportunity to have a miracle. Some of you have taken your miracle.
my friend, is a symbol of victory. Right.
They come desiring freedom. They come desiring opportunity. They come desiring protection. And all of these things you will receive if you become a citizen of this country. Likewise tonight, we have citizens in the cross. Jesus Christ gave his disciples a command that is echoed for generations and can still be heard today. Amen. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. This was not only a request to follow Jesus now in sacrificial path or to deny oneself, but it was a call to become a citizen of that cross. Yeah. Being a citizen of the cross means that you join yourself to it. You commit yourself to it. In essence, Brother Barry, you live in it. You completely sell out to it. Right. And whatever country that your flesh came from, you break all ties with that country right. and you became a citizen and you joined the union of the cross. Right. I am so thankful tonight that when I was baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, right. and when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I no longer became a citizen of the world, but I became a citizen of the cross. And somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As with any uh, desire for citizenship with another country, you've got to pledge your loyalty to the cross, knowing that in any way, if you work against it, you will be considered a traitor, you will be considered uh, engaging in acts of treason, and there is a punishment that will be held to the fullest extent of the law. Right. Nobody knew this like the Apostle Paul, who declared many times that he was not only a citizen of the cross, but he said, I am a servant to the cross. I want you to hear what I'm telling you tonight. The Apostle Paul said, I am going to live and I'm going to breathe to uphold the laws of the cross and the standard that it represents. Amen. You know what I believe that the Lord is tired of today? People that are proclaiming to be citizens of the cross, but their lives tell a different story. Their lives say that they're from a different country. Let me remind you tonight, just in case anybody here has forgotten, we are an apostolic church, and an apostolic church believes in the preaching of the cross. The cross represents sacrifice. The cross represents pain. It represents liberty from sin and from death and hell in the grave. And so if I'm a citizen of the cross, and I will enjoy the benefits of the cross. But the plain and simple fact is, is that many people don't understand what that requires. I can tell you that living a committed and a consecrated lifestyle, as we find ourselves in our feet this year, preparing for a work of God, and doing so through consecration and commitment, I can tell you tonight that there's people that want to be a citizen of the cross. They want all the fringe bill of benefits of fellowship, but they don't want to commit to what the cross says. I want you to hear me tonight. The cross is not comfortable. Jesus Christ's cross was not it didn't have air conditioning. It didn't have cruise control. It didn't have bells and whistles. Let me tell you what the cross was. It wasn't pleasure. It was painful. Yes. No one hung on that cross unless they intended to be there for the duration. You couldn't be hung on that cross and then say, that's it, I give up. You couldn't hang on that cross and say, no more, I don't have anything to do with it. Folks, when you were nailed there, you were nailed there. Amen. And I think too many Christians fail to realize that when Jesus was speaking about what was going to happen and what he was going to do, there were two of the disciples whose mother spoke up and said, Oh, let my son sit on your side, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And Jesus said, How can they do that? Can they suffer the same death as me? Can they taste the same sting of death as me? And they said, and their mother, of course, being the mom, said, Oh, yeah, they're good boys. And he said, you know what? They will. You know how they're going to be able to? Because I'm going to go to the cross. And I'm going to take the pain away from it. You know what I think, folks? I think whatever the cross asks of me, that's what I'm going to do. If the cross says you need to be in church every time the doors are open, that's what I'm going to do. If the cross says you need to pay the tithes in your offerings, that's what I'm going to do. If the cross says you need to be the witness to me in this world, that's what I'm going to do. And live holy and separate. 
Too many people fool around. Too many people play games. And too many people aren't serious about this union with the cross. And, and, and so the Apostle Paul pledged his loyalty to it. Uh, and not for what it was, uh, but for who it was that had hung on that cross. Uh -huh. So coming to citizen of the cross was so important to him. And he commissioned all those who would listen to follow him. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul spoke very frequently of all the blessings of the cross. He spoke of the protection, Brother Finney, of the cross. He spoke of the privileges of the cross. And it was only Paul's commitment to it that would enable him to draw closer with God. That's why before anybody could follow Jesus at all, they had to accept the call to follow the cross. Amen. That's before anybody could ever be a disciple. If they saw Jesus walking by and said, oh, I want to follow him. That call never came. That call to be a disciple never came until you answered the call, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus never said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. No, he said, take up your cross and follow me. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. But you had to take up the cross first. Amen. Are you trying to tell us, Brother Maroney, I'm trying to remind you tonight, just in case that you've forgotten, that taking up the cross and being a Christian, and folks, it's not all about the nice building, it's not about the nice lights in the media, it's not about the rock and music, it's not about the Sunday school and all that. I'm going to tell you what it's about. Unless you can take up a cross, then you're in the Christian business for the wrong reason. And I'm reminding you tonight that the Christian, Christianity in the world is a big business. It's a boom.
that I'm going to follow you. Paul didn't say follow me because I'm apostolic. Paul said follow me as I follow Christ. And the moment I stop following Christ, you stop following me. The moment that it becomes about me and what I want to do. Yes. Amen. Come on now. We have to be careful. We have to be careful in this movement because if the devil can't attack us from the outside, he'll try to attack us from within. And if he tries to get his hands on you from within, he'll make you start questioning and second guessing everybody. How they live and what are they doing? I want you to hear me tonight. If somebody's living according to the cross, you follow them. If they veer off the path, come on somebody. If they veer off the path, you mark them as Paul said. You mark them. Do not get mixed up in the crowd. I don't care what the new thing is. Sometimes what looks like Christianity is really can be just the opposite of Christianity. Right. Amen. Paul was speaking of two kinds of people. These enemies were uh, either the Judaizers who denied the validity of the cross altogether. And Brother Michael, they substituted obedience to a formal code in its place or, or those that were against the law. The, the Antiochians who refused to conform to Christ and instead they lived a life of self-indulgence. And there's two people that exist in that this world today. Two people that exist in the church world today. Those that, that are so far to one side that like Brother Perry used to say, that they don't believe in, in scratching when they itch because it makes you feel good. <laughs> I miss Brother Perry. <laughs> then there's those who live a life of self-indulgence. It's all about me. It's all about what makes me happy. Right. Preacher, preach to me as long as you're preaching about success and mm -hmm. feeling right. good. Yeah. Right. And I can go to heaven no matter what because I'm just, I take a bath in grace every day. <laughs> Folks, you take a bath in grace every day. But you know what? Taking a bath in grace costs you a little something every day. Right. Right. Amen. Right. So, so, there are those who disregard the true teachings of the cross. What the truth exhibits. I'm sick and tired of watching the world produce books, movements, movies, television shows about how, I'm just going to say it, easy that it is to be a Christian. Oh, can I preach to you right now? Right? I've been living in this all my life. Mm -hmm. I've not always lived it, right. but I've been living in it all my life. As long as I can remember. And I can tell you <coughs> that living this lifestyle is not always easy. Right. Right. Anybody else? Can you attest to that? Right. There's some people that want to think that all oh, my life is just grand, it's perfect, it's wonderful. So you know what? Good for you. <laughs> but I'm a human being. Amen. And human beings have struggles. Right. Whatever your planet, whatever planet you're from, I'd love to visit sometime. Might be a nice vacation. <laughs> but as for this planet, we have struggles from time to time. Amen. Yes. And the cross never promised that it would be easy. Right. Amen. I will not change what the cross stands for and what is required by it so much that it completely removes it from the equation. I want you to hear what I'm telling you tonight. There are those that live in such a way that they want to revive and they want to reinforce their sin that our Savior died to deliver them from. The play idea that you think you can go back after you've been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and live in any measure the same way that you did before you got out of that mess is like saying Jesus knew as long as you live for yourself, as long 
be destruction. That's right, man. It says whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You know what they were? Brother Donnie, they were absorbed with the things that will be destroyed. If you say, oh, Jesus wants us just to enjoy all the things in life, I want you to understand something. He wants you to enjoy life, friend. Jesus is not a hard taskmaster, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that you're trying to enjoy that's not going to make it in the end. It's going to burn up. It's very easy to get caught up in all the political madness. 
madness and the financial madness. Let me tell you, friend, every time I hear the news, I think we're more broke than we've ever been before. I wonder about the future of our country. I wonder about the future of internationally of our country. But then I have to remind myself, Brother Jamal, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor received back for bread. That's what God does. That's what He's excellent at. But the Bible says that they grew, they increased. You know why? Because people, let me tell you, people that are against the cross, that are enemies of the cross, they, 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 if you will, they multiply. It's like a disease, it's like an infection. And they become enemies of the cross of Christ. And they attack. Listen, and, and I know that the Holy Ghost is the one that's kind of put me right here. You know, it just, it's the way it works. It's the way the Holy Ghost does. So, listen, if somebody, you know, comes up and they want to spread their disease, you tell them, say, look, I don't want to hear that drench. I don't want to hear that garbage. That's right. I want to hear that. I mean, let's face it. We've all got enough stuff in our lives, right? Stay positive. Put your conversation in heaven. Paul said, those that don't want to live it, those that don't want to commit, those that want to do nothing but spread negativity to everybody else, you know what they are? He called them enemies of the cross. He said there are those that their God is in their belly, their desires, whoever they can walk over, whoever they can put down, whoever they weren't about making anybody else feel good, they wanted to make themselves feel good. They had their conversation. Here's what's amazing. That word conversation in the Greek is the word that is the same for citizenship. He said they had their citizenship in heaven. I want you to hear me. I don't want to give up my citizenship in heaven. If I'm attached to the cross, then folks, I've got citizenship to the cross, which means I've got citizenship in heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. And it was there in verse 20. Our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know tonight, friend, that my desire is not for this world. My desire is for a better land. It's for a better country. I'm walking through this earth as a pilgrim on foreign soil. In the flesh, I was born here. But when I was born again, I was born of the Holy Ghost. When I was born again, I became a citizen of heaven. Anybody else here tonight that's a citizen of heaven? Is there anybody else here tonight that's a proud of where you came from? So when I become a citizen of the cross, I am free born. Yes. I didn't have, listen, when I was born into this country, I was born in Portsmouth, Virginia at a naval hospital. And when I was born into this world in Portsmouth, Virginia, in a room in a naval hospital, I didn't have to fill out a test, take a test. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to sign a car. You know what happened? I was born into this world. I was born into this country. But you know what made me an American citizen? You know what made me free, Brother McCain? was not any wars that I fought. It wasn't any battles that I won. It was my forefathers that won them for me. I'm telling you right now that when you're born into this, into this citizenship of the cross, it wasn't because of any battles that you fought or won. It wasn't a war that you fought and it wasn't a war that you won. It's because Jesus made you free all. So you were born his blood right. writes your name into the Lamb's book of life. Yes. And on that great day, when that book is taken off of that shelf, Brother Wade, and the pages are turned, and he looks in that book, and he sees it written in blood, wavy maiden. Amen. Right. When he looks in it, and he sees it. Donnie Perry. Oh, he looks at and sees Gayla Maroney. Oh, Jessica Carlton. When he reads those things and he sees it, yeah, he can say, they were born here. Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. They can come in because they were born here. Yeah. Sister Sharon, Cause you were born. Oh yes. yes. See the enemies, the foreigners. He's gonna 
say, depart from me. I never knew you. You worked iniquity. But the ones written in this book, that you, oh, you can say whatever you want. You can say, well, I lived however I wanted to live. Or you can say, I lived it to the letter. But I'm going to tell you in the end, here's the only thing that's going to matter, Brother Jesse. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Is your name written? Are you a citizen of heaven? I'm thankful and I'm 